Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic of this video is using Sybase with ITX10 via the JDBC adapter. Feel free to engage with me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. For today's practical demonstration, I'm going to show you the configuration of the Sybase ODBC driver. I'm then going to show how to connect the ITX10 database interface designer to Sybase via that ODBC connection. We're then going to generate a type tree via the ODBC connection. For the second part of the demonstration, I'm going to show you the installation and configuration of the JDBC driver. We're then going to design a map to retrieve data via JDBC. And then the final section, we're going to create a second map and use the ODBC derived type tree with the JDBC adapter, including the manual modifications required to make it work properly. I'm going to start this demonstration in the ITX 10.1 Design Studio. As you can see, I have a single project called Project 1 already defined. And within my project, I've created a simple type tree called generic.mtt. I also have a database query file, skeleton file, that I've, I have already defined. And I'm going to open that now in the database interface designer. I'm going to bring up the definition of the only database that I've defined. The definition is local Sybase ODBC. I'm using the ODBC adapter and I'm connecting to the data source called local Sybase underscore 64 for both DID and runtime. In the security section, I filled in my user ID and password. Now we can be sure that all these are working by double clicking on the tables entry and we get a complete list of all the tables in our Sybase database, including my test table that I'm going to be using for today's demonstration, test one. I'm going to bring up the ODBC window briefly. Uh, this is the 64-bit ODBC administrator, and as you will see, I have a Sybase Adaptive Server Enterprise 16 ODBC driver installed. And in the system DSN tab, I have that F definition that we saw in the DID, local Sybase underscore 64. If I click on the configure button and click on test connection, if I type in my password and OK, you will note that we get login succeeded. So the ODBC connection is fully set up and ready to go. So the next step is to create a type tree that we're going to use later for our JDBC connection. So I'm going to start by defining a new query, query one. And for my query, I'm going to select all records from test one. If I right click that query that I just created and choose generate tree, I'm going to give it a custom name. I'm going to call it query underscore test one because that's the table name and click OK and command completed successfully. You will note that the columns in the table are listed here so we know that that has actually worked. So I'm going to save this MDQ file for now and close. If I refresh the project in the type tree section as well as the generic .mtt that we had before you will now see that we have query underscore test one dot mtt. Okay let's move on to creating the map. So right click new map source. I'm going to put this in project one and call it test.mms. And the map source is open. Within that map source, I'm going to create a new map, test one. Within test one, I'm going to create an output card. The card is going to be called out. The type tree we're going to use is generic.mtt and the type within there is just the simple text item. Let's write to a file called output.txt. Okay, now I'm going to use my JDBC adapter to get some data from the database via the JDBC adapter. 
Uh, I've pre-prepared the uh, rule that I'm going to use, so I'm just going to copy that to clipboard and then paste that into my map. I'll go through the rule piece by piece. So first of all we're wrapping the entire thing in a valid uh, function. If the valid function is tripped and there's some kind of problem um, it will use the last error message function and just write that out to our output file output.txt. So within the valid we're doing a get from the JDBC adapter and the connection string we're using is dash driver dash URL dash user dash password dash TV to turn on verbose tracing and then we've got some additional connection strings that are required here AS QTY LSN and finally the most important dash query to actually specify the query that we want to do against the database now the driver string as you can see is com.sybase.jdbc42 jdbc driver. The URL string is jdbc colon sybase colon tds colon. Then the next piece is my host name and that's the machine that I'm working on now followed by a colon and then the port number that sybase can be found running at which in my case is the default 5000. We have my username and we have my password and this should all be ready to go. We haven't actually installed the JDBC driver yet and I just wanted to show you what happens when you try to run before installing the driver. So let's save, build and run. The map has completed successfully. Uh, there is no fail function here so it wouldn't fail even if the JDBC get failed but it will write a message into the output file. So let's have a quick look at that now. Uh, we'll open miscellaneous and output. Okay, as you can see here there's an exception. It, uh, it's basically complaining that it can't find the um, JDBC driver and we need to rectify that before we can move forward. So let's do that now. Let's uh, move that window across. In my extras folder you will note that I have a jar file that has been supplied by SAP Sybase. It is jcon42.jar. Now I'm going to take a copy of that file and put it into my IBM ITX101 directory in a subdirectory called extjar. Now that file is in there, I would normally have to restart the design server for that to be picked up, but um, I already know that this can be loaded dynamically. Uh, the only thing it can't do is unload dynamically. So I know this is going to now pick this up. So if I now build and run this map again, you will note the output um, window has changed and is now showing the contents of a table. Two rows, in fact. So this is great. Our JDBC driver has been picked up from the um, ext jar directory and the JDBC adapter has used it to connect to my local Sybase and retrieve the contents of the table as per my query. Well it's all very well using it in a get, how do you use it in an input card? So I'm going to copy my uh, connection string into my clipboard because I want to be able to use this in just a moment. I need to copy everything between the double quotes. Now I'm going to create a new map. The new map is going to be called test2. In test2 I'm going to create an input card. The card is going to be called in1. The type tree that I'm going to be using is the type tree that are generated from the database interface designer and the ODBC adapter. This actual type tree will not work with the JDBC driver immediately but I want to show you what happens when we use it without any changes. So we'll change the source to JDBC. We'll paste our command into the command string from our clipboard from the previous rule and click OK. For this map I'm going to turn on input content tracing because I know that it's going to fail with one or more inputs was invalid. So let's turn on input content tracing here. OK. And then save, build and run. There we go. The map has completed and as expected we have input valid but unknown data found. I'm going to show you the content of the MTR file which is here, test2.mtr. 
and you will note that um, it says here that data at offset 14 where you can see a vertical bar and a 19 and an LF character does not match the terminator CRLF. Now this is because the ODBC adapter brings back rows terminated with CRLF and creates a type tree to expect that. The JDBC adapter on the other hand brings back rows delimited with just LF. So we need to make a manual change to the type tree to be able to use it with JDBC adapter. So we'll do that now. We click on the row object, bring up the properties, expand properties, expand type syntax, expand terminator and you'll note it says CRLF. Right click row and choose open type tree. In the properties window again we find the CRLF that we looked at just now and just simply remove the CR. I'm going to analyze the type tree. I'm going to save the type tree and update the map that's still open. And now when I build and run this map, you see map completed successfully. So there we go. That's a quick summary of using the JDBC adapter to connect to a Sybase data source and using the ODBC adapter to generate a type tree manually modifying it slightly so that it can be used with the JDBC adapter. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to engage with me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.